everybody. Good morning. Good to see everybody this fine morning. We got a new system we're trying out a little bit today. Uh, we've got a new mic and uh, a new uh, camera. We're gonna gonna do them both here, make sure everything works out. But uh, looks like everything's working pretty good with it. Uh, I will remind you that this is New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky, at 12th and Central. Pastor Randall Baker, glad to have you folks here. Glad to have everybody on the video this day. What you got for us there, Dale, for a song? Let's do what. Well, let's start off with 184. We need a good revival anyway, don't we? We do, and you know what? We got a special thing going on today. We're gonna have a baptism. That's always a good time. Yes, sir. That's that's a good day to celebrate. That is. What what is 184? I'm sorry, 184, guys. 184. All righty. Hopefully everybody can hear better today, huh? Hopefully this, this, uh, all this labor wasn't in vain. Huh? <laughs> 184, revive us again. Everybody sing with us. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone Competition. <laughs> so when it was done, they said, We won, we won. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. We can have some fun like that. Today's uh, messages for today, uh, January 7, 2024, join us for church council meeting on Saturday, January 20th at 10 a.m. And uh, as the winter weather is upon us, and they did say there could have been some snow today, but we uh, somehow missed it. Thank God for that. But just please check Facebook. And then play channels 12, uh, 9, and 19 for closing. So we'll let you know when uh, when we do uh, when we do close. When we're going to close. I do have all the. If you want to put these on your calendar, you can here. But the 2024 church council meetings will be, as I said, uh, January 20th, and then uh, March 16th, uh, May 18th, July 20th. September 21st and November 16th will be uh, when we'll have them. Now, uh, on Sunday school, we ask for uh, birthdays. If anybody's got a birthday, we'll sing happy birthday to him. And Buddy always reminds us that his birthday is coming up, but it's usually, well, this time we've been told this one is 11 and a half months away, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, according to this, you know, we're getting closer to it at November 16th. You can probably remind us a little closer. <laughs> Uncle Jess used to do that, and now uh, Buddy has taken over for him. Yeah. But well, it's okay to have uh, a little bit of fun sometimes as a Christian and enjoy each other's company and fellowship. We're glad to... We're glad to See everybody and uh, hear everybody do that. And we did take up some prayer requests this morning in uh, in uh, Sunday school, and we had we do have some uh, sad news uh, uh, that uh, Sister Faye Little uh, has they found some lesions on uh, some of her organs, her pancreas, and her lungs, I think, and maybe her kidneys. And uh, when I got the uh, uh, 
uh, messages, that's all that they knew, but since then they have found out that it is cancer and that they won't be able to give her any kind of uh, a treatment of any kind. Uh, so just keep her in, in uh, prayer that uh, she's in good spirits, as I said, she's in very good spirits and uh, not too concerned about it. And that, uh, you know, that's a good thing. And we were talking about that also in uh, Sunday school this morning. And uh, uh, Dale, Buddy, and Jean's, uh, Patty's mother, Mark's mother, when uh, she had breast cancer, and it was obvious that she wasn't going to be able to, uh, to get out of it, that uh, it was going to take her life, she was, she was small smiles, ear to ear. I mean, just as happy as she could be. That's what we ought to be, isn't it? Yeah. We're Christian, we ought to be. We ought to be, look, be looking for a better day. I think that's what she was doing, looking for a better day, a brighter day, and a great reunion day. Not only with our Lord and Savior, but also with those of, of our family and loved ones that's gone on before us. Now, we don't know how much longer Faye will be with us, but, uh, you know, we, we, we've enjoyed all the time that we've had with her. And, you know, we certainly don't want her to be in any kind of pain or anything, so we need to pray for her, uh, for comfort for her, and comfort for her family. Uh, this morning also my sister Sarah called and said she wasn't feeling too good and uh, Buddy got a message from uh, Sandy that uh, Geneva wasn't feeling very well this morning. Also my brother Dexter uh, sent me a message that he, uh, his wife Pam wasn't feeling uh, good this morning, was sick. And also Larry called me yesterday, Larry Griffith called me yesterday and he's in the hospital again with a, a, another infection in his foot or leg. Uh, from his diabetes. So keep Larry in your prayers. Keep all those in your prayer. They, uh, they all need prayer. All of, We all need prayer, don't we? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. We absolutely do. Who else has got a prayer request this morning? Yeah, Nikki? Um, pray for my friend from work. Um, just with the going to the hospital and everything. Pray for him and she's just a little nervous about it. So just keep her in her prayer. Uh, somebody you work with? Yeah. Ollie? Well, my grandson Andrew, he's having a little rough time with his medication. Okay. He can't, they're not getting it regulated, and his heart rate and pulse is real high. Okay, we'll you keep Andy in your prayer for sure. Elsie? Um, me and my family, uh, Mary's okay. going to have a hysterectomy. Okay, now I was talking about that, Elsie, but, oh, but this, Elsie, you know, <laughs> let's do this like this. You go ahead, Elsie. Well, my sister, uh, my daughter in law, Mary, is going to have a hysterectomy on the 22nd. Keep her in your prayers. Just pray for her. Now this, Elsie, now. <laughs> I didn't know she was back. <laughs> I, I can't really hear you. I'm sorry. My sister Grace is in the hospital with pneumonia. Her sister Grace. Her sister Grace. She okay. Said. Uh, this thing is running behind me here now. This heater and the stuff is running and uh, I can't have here anyway. So they were talking about this microphone and that it was uh, better and, and if I talk on it uh, right into it then some people that couldn't normally hear me too well could hear me maybe and hopefully that's the case. It does seem like it's working better than the old one did. So hopefully that will help you and maybe get a better experience here if we can hear everything that's going on. But that's not going to help me hear you guys any at all. So you, you will have to speak up when my hearing is not that great. Terry complains about it all the time. and. Uh, I can certainly tell that I have got some hearing loss. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Yes, Brenda? Uh, continued prayers for my mom and her caregivers. Okay, absolutely. Mitchell? My wife is pretty sick. Okay. Pray for Amanda then for sure. Go, go. Several issues. Don't forget Tanya now for tomorrow, guys. Tanya is going to have a, a shoulder surgery yep. uh, tomorrow. And we're hoping it's just a routine surgery and everything goes well, but uh, when you're the one going on the table and under the knife, it's, uh, it's always a little scary and it's always yes, some apprehension there. So keep her in your prayers. You know, Terry? Um, pray for my family. Okay, yeah, pray for our family. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Anybody? Uh, uh, anybody got a sign request on her heart? God knows you are. He knows what we stand in need of, but he still does tell us to ask, and we do ask him to be obedient to his word. Let's have a man that will come on up, and we'll gather around, and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Yeah, you go ahead and open some heart prayer, if you would. Sure 
Our Heavenly Father, God, once again, we just want to thank you, Lord, once again for another opportunity to come out to your house this morning. Father, we thank you for the reasonable amount of peace that we do have and the reasonable amount of health that you let us enjoy, Lord, and making us able to come to your house to worship you, Lord, as, as we should, as you so, uh, so much deserve. Amen. Father, we thank you for just everyone that you've sent out this morning, each one that fills their seat. And we pray, Lord, that when they leave today, they can say it was good to have been here this Amen. morning. Father, we want to lift up all these prayer requests to you this morning. They're all special to <coughs> us, Lord, and we thank you for them. I do thank you for the, the outstanding testimony and just for the time that we had with Sister Faye and knowing her, Lord. And I pray, uh, God, if it be your will, that you'll take care of that situation, whatever uh, the end outcome may be, Lord. I know that you're still in charge and you're able to do far above what we can even comprehend, Lord. So we'll just leave that situation in your hands, Lord. Strengthen her, comfort her, just be with her, hold her hand, put your hands around her, Lord. Love her, be real good to her yes. this time, Lord. I know that's a trying time on the family to hear news like that. Uh, Especially when they have a dear mother that's uh, been an old saint like that for so long, it's it's hard to say goodbye sometimes. And if that's you know what the end outcome would be, Lord, I, I don't know that situation, but I know you do. You know who holds, or you're the one that holds the future. So, and we're thankful for that. So, Lord, I just uh, lift that request up to you this morning. You deal with it in your own good way, and we'll thank you for that in advance. And Father, we want to mention all the others. That prayer was mentioned here for today and my wife as well lord i pray that you just bless the surgeons as they um as they work on that tomorrow lord and you just bless that situation and help her to have a, a speedy recovery with it as well and all of them lord it's uh, got news of operations or sicknesses uh, just visit each and every one of those situations that were mentioned here today lord because like i say they're all special to us lord and we uh, we want the best for them and God, we pray now that you just take this service into your own big hands, Lord. And work it out in a manner that be pleasing to you. Everything we do here, Lord, we want it to be, uh, you know, to uplift and to glorify your holy name, Lord, because you are so worthy. And, uh, and we owe you so much and can do so little for you. But we want everything that we do here to be pleasing to you. So I, I pray that as Brother Randall comes in the stands, that you just overshadow him, Lord, giving clear thoughts and clear speech, and uh, and, uh, and and help us to uh, to be still and to be quiet and to listen, Lord, just to the message that you have us to hear today. And I pray, Lord, that there be someone here that might be lost, Lord, that maybe today would be the day of salvation for that soul, because you said they was rejoicing in heaven for uh, for just one person that comes uh, to repentance, Lord, and we'll thank you for that in advance. God, we just thank you for this great country that we do live in. I know it's got many problems, but you're still in control of that. And, and sometimes as you're straightening things out, we don't know what's going on. We can't see the end results. But I know, Lord, if we just leave it up to you, that it will be for our benefit. Right. And we'll thank you for that as well. We'll bless this nation of ours, the leaders of it. Remember our service men and women, wherever they may be this week. Morning, Lord. I know there's a lot of tensions going on in the Middle East and around the world with um, Russia, China, and everyone else, Israel, and all those that are involved, Lord. I just uh, pray for those nations, Lord, that you'd uh, help them to, uh, to to see the right way, the way that you yeah. would have them to go, Lord. And Because uh, I know, like I said, your way is far above ours, Lord, yeah. and, and it's a past finding out. But I pray that you'd give them a little wisdom, a little insight to settle their conflicts this morning. So be with our servicemen and women. Be with our missionaries out in the field. And our evangelists traveling the highways today, Lord. And remember all the churches in this country and the countries abroad, Lord, that are preaching and teaching in thy name and according to thy will. I pray that you just bless them as well today. <coughs> Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for making a way from, from earth to heaven for us through your son Jesus Christ and his shed blood on that cross. We thank you for loving us even when we didn't love you, Lord. And all these favors and blessings we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
if you're able to, go ahead and stand up. If you're not, you can remain seated. But we're going to take up an offering uh, for the church, for the running of the church, the ladies' fund, the uh, missionaries, uh, Sunday school, and those on the video. If you'd like to send in your gift or offering to New Macedonia Baptist Church, send in the P.O. Box 151 Alexandria, Kentucky, 41001. And as always, thank you for what you've given. Thank you for what you will give. And may the Lord richly bless you for it. And as Brother Pat used to say, may he repay you fourfold. Yeah. What you got there for us? Uh, let's do two ninety nine. Glory to his name. That's a good one. Yep. I really like this one too. <clears throat> Glory to his name. Two ninety nine. You deserve it. Yes, sir. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was a blood applied. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory Sovereign of the sea, 
Jesus Savior pilot me when at last I near the shore and the fearful breakers roar twitch me and the peaceful Is Amanda down there with them then? Or? Well, they want to sing? You guys want to sing? Is that it? Is there somebody downstairs so they can also go down there when we're finished? Yeah, there's no one down there. Huh? They're staying with us today. No one down there. So, uh. Nobody's downstairs. Where's Brody Earl? Uh, Brody Earl? Brody Earl? Brody Earl? Hey, what girls? I don't think you can touch this microphone because it, uh, it's got something on it that I think makes it go off. It makes it go off when you put your hand on it. So you just sing, all gather around there and sing loud and look pretty. Somebody needs to fix the camera. What is it? Your camera. Your camera. camera. All right, that's fine. We're getting them on that. Well, that's that's fine. Yeah. Count the times I called your name so broken night And you showed up and patched me up like you do every time I get amnesia I forget that you keep coming around But there ain't no way you'll ever let me down Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me Praise in your name no matter what I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. You say your love goes on forever. That your mercy never stops. So why should I assume you'd be somebody that you're not like sun in the morning? I know you're going to be there every day. So what on earth could make me feel afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Because I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he good? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning. Love him in the noontime. Love him when the sun goes down. Now, if you, if you saw the uh, church play, you know, they always sang a little solo at the church play. I'm going to challenge her to learn a, a good Christian song and sing it up here for us sometime also. So we'll work you up a song, Allie, and you come up and sing it for us sometime. Okay? Sounds good. So there's nobody downstairs. Amanda's not downstairs. Where is she? No, she's still working on that. Okay. There's no one downstairs. Okay, that's fine. Then the kids will stay up here today, then. They have to stay with us for a bit. All right. Anybody else got a song they want to sing? If not, then let's do this. Let's turn in your Bibles uh, uh, to James chapter 3, verse 8, I believe it is. James 3, 8. In the back of your Bible, James 3, 8. <coughs> James 3, 9. James 3, 9. That was pretty close. James 3, 9.
Go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the many, many wonderful gifts you've given us, Lord. Just ask you to bless me to, to preach this message in a way that you would have me to preach it, Lord. Prepare the hearts to receive it. Bless us in all things, Heavenly Father, and we'll give you all the glory for it all. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Psalm 139, 14 says this, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Now there's no doubt that of all the Lord's creations, and he made a lot of great creations, there's no doubt though that man is his masterpiece. As God created each of his wonderful things, his wonderful works, he saw that it was good. And man was the last thing that he had created. And the Bible says that when he looked at it all and looked at everything that he said, he saw that it was very good. It was very good. People are the only creation uh, that are said to be made in the image of God. And, and I believe that's because that we have a soul. We have a soul, and that soul gives us a conscious, and conscious, and, and as well as understanding and knowledge. So the things that he made in this world, the animals, the trees, uh, the, the, the birds, the plants, and all that, that were, they were made to beautify the garden, the Bible says. They were made to beautify the garden, but the man it said he was told, he was put there in the garden, and he was put there to dress it and to keep it. We uh, uh, humans are, uh, have dominance over everything in, in this world, and we are the designated caretakers of this earth and of this world. And you know, like most things, we fail in some of that, haven't we? But we haven't failed in everything. God loves His creation, and especially mankind. And you know, we can see that, that there's, it's evidenced by the way that He has been blessed us. He's been patient with us. He's been kind with us. And He has blessed us all down through the ages. And chiefly, in the way He, did, he gave us the greatest gift that fallen mankind could ever have. And that is, of course, I'm talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the salvation that we can obtain through Him by belief in His death, burial, and resurrection. Now, thousands of years ago, on Mount Ebal, on one of the mountains, Mount Ebal, stood half of the Israelites. On the other side, on Mount Gerizim, stood the other half of the Israelites. And the priest would read, from one side, the priest would read blessings from the law of Moses. And from the other side, they would read curses. Now, they could choose what they wanted to do. They could choose to receive those blessings. They could choose to receive those cursings if they wanted. And just like the Israelites, <coughs> God has given us that same thing, that free choice and that unfettered thoughts and beliefs. We got that. We can do that. We can choose for ourselves. We can decide to follow the laws, the rules, the commandments, and the things that God has given us. Or we can just as easily disregard them and just go our own way and do our own thing. We have that right to do that. We have that free choice to do that. As Deuteronomy 13, 19, uh, 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God wants you to choose life. He wants you to choose life just as he wanted them to. He wants you to choose blessing. We don't always do that, but God is always had our best interest at heart. He always wants best for us. He gave us the tools to do that. He gave us the Holy Spirit indwelling in us as Christians. He gave us the Holy Bible. But we don't always follow those things. We don't always make use of them. Even after we've received that free gift of salvation, we still have that old nature. It's still tugging at it. It's still trying to pull us away from the goodness of God. The Apostle Paul said this in Romans 8, 19, For the good that I would, I, not, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. I'm afraid that's the way we are stuck to it. It's an internal struggle. It's a, it's a spiritual battle inside us all the time. The new man against the old man. Amen. We try to justify. We try to justify a lot of things we do by saying our flesh is weak. You know, we try to say our flesh is weak, but you know we're still responsible. We are still the ones that are responsible for our actions, for our sins. Yeah. We won't lose our salvation, we know that, but there are consequences of sin. We've talked about that many times. There's consequences for sin, and that's a loss of rewards, and that's a missed blessings. When the Apostle Paul talks about Christian liberties, and he's talked about it a couple of different times in the Bible, that we have liberties as Christians. He's not given us a free pass to sin. Amen. 
Amen. He's not doing that when he says that. Jesus Christ did give us a get out of hell free card when he put our name on the Lamb Book of Life. But we still have a responsibility. It's still up to us to shun sin and to keep ourselves as clean and pure as we can, as possibly as we can. Yep. Now that was kind of the introduction. Here's a pretty long introduction for the sermon that I want, that I hope to deliver this morning. And I titled my sermon, The Same Heart and the Same Mouth. Well, looking here in James chapter 3, verse, uh, James chapter 3, verse 9 through 12, it says, Therefore, therewith rather, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brother, brethren, these things ought not to be so. Though the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive ber berries, either of vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. So according to the nature of those two things, just don't happen together. Turn over to 1 Timothy 5.13. 1 Timothy 5.13. Our hearts and our mouths, you know, they're both a blessing and they're a curse to us. We know that in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says this, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And also in James 3, 6, it says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Anyone here ever have trouble controlling their tongue? Controlling their mouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think most of us do. Now, it seems like it has a mind of its own sometimes. You know, we just can't hardly stop it. Can't hardly control it. We do sometimes try to control the things that we say and control our mouths. But other times, we just say whatever's on our mind. Whatever we think, whatever we want to say, we just go ahead and say it. <laughs> Job said this in his book, 7-Eleven. Uh, Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Like Job, we complain, don't we? We complain when we have problems. We complain when we have troubles. But we also got to be careful because Job also said this in 15.6. He says, Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Thine own lips testify against thee. In the book of Exodus, uh, God punished the Israelites when they were out in the wilderness for complaining. They complained about God. They complained about Moses. They complained about them. They said that God and Moses had led them out in the wilderness to let them die of thirst and to let them die of hunger. They complained a whole lot to God. God didn't like that very much. He, he punished them for that. And we know this. God says many times he don't like proud. He don't like being proud. He don't like bragging. He don't like boasting on ourselves. The Bible says let another uh, uh, boast for thee or let another praise thee. We do tend to uh, praise ourselves sometimes. Psalm 34, 13 says this. Keep the tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Something I think that most of us do, most of us have a problem with at some point or another, and it's strongly condemned in the Bible many times is gossiping. A lot of us have a problem with gossiping. It's easy, it's easy to get sucked into a good juicy story. Especially if it's somebody you don't care that much for, you don't like that much. 1 Timothy 5.13, 1 Timothy 5.13 says this, and with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Speaking things which they ought not. Turn over to Colossians chapter 3, verse 9. Colossians 3, 9. The mouth, as we all know, is also guilty of telling lies. You know, stretching the truth a little bit. Psalm 50, 19 says this, Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. You know, a lie can cause all kinds of trouble. It can end friendships. It can destroy marriages. Lies have been uh, devastated people's lives. And lies have caused hatred and dissension among churches. Colossians 3, 9 says this, Colossians 3, 9 says, lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds. We should fight against stuff like that. It's hard. I mean, it's, uh, 
Humans tend to want to do that. They want to tell, they want to stretch the truth. They want to make it look better for themselves. Go ahead and turn over to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15, 18. Matthew 15, 18. The heart and the mouth are connected. They're tied together in so much as this. When you're upset, your true feelings will come out a lot of times. <laughs> You may, what you may not normally say or what you may not normally want to tell somebody becomes a little easier when you're mad or when your feelings have been hurt. And we know this, that a heart can easily be broken. Your heart can easily get broken and most of us are much more sensitive than we want to pretend that we are when we act like we are. Or, you know, a lot of us want to, want to not show our emotions, but we're a lot more sensitive than we let on to be. We even have expressions that's like uh, once bitten and twice shy. So if our heart does get broken, then sometimes we'll, we'll harden our heart. We'll harden our heart to certain situations and to certain people. And there will be much more cautious after that. Here's what Jeremiah, of course, that we said earlier, that our hearts are deceitful. Our hearts deceive us. And we have to be careful of this. Since our hearts are deceitful, and we think we know things a lot of times that we don't, we have to be careful that it's not us that's breaking other people's hearts. We have to be careful that we're not the ones that are doing that. The Bible says that our heart may faint at, dip, at some, some certain uh, sets of circumstances. And there are times that our hearts become full, of, become full of hate and our hearts become full of envy. You know, it's hard to trust your heart. The world will tell you, follow your heart. Don't follow your heart, folks. You know, follow the word of Jesus Christ. Follow the Bible. Your heart can be troubled, and your heart can be in anguish. And speaking of what's in your heart, speaking what's in your heart and what's on your mind is not always a good thing. Matthew 15, 18 says this. Matthew 15, 18 says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile a man. They defile a man. Turn over to Ephesians. We're going to probably get through this fairly quickly today so that we can get on some other business, but turn over to Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 19. Ephesians 6, 19. Now we read in James 3, 10, that out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings, and we talk a lot about those cursings, about the bad things that come out of the mouth and the heart. But now let's look at some good things. There's some good things that come out of it. There's some blessings. The same mouth out of the Apostle Peter, the very same mouth that said he didn't know Jesus Christ. He lied, didn't he? Three times he said he did not know Jesus Christ. That same mouth in Acts 4 said that Peter pre preached to the people and he preached Jesus Christ to them. And 5,000 people, about 5,000 were saved. Also, uh, the same mouth that went to the Jews. It went to the Jews only, because they were told to go, not to the Gentiles, but go to the Jews only. He went to uh, uh, Cornelius, the Roman centurion, Acts 10.34, and said, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. There's no difference now between the Jew and the Greek. Peter seemed to spend a lot of his time as a disciple with his foot in his mouth, saying the wrong things. But you know when he became an apostle, when he became a apostle, became an apostle of Jesus Christ. He became a great speaker, a great preacher for Jesus Christ. And as we said earlier, thousands were saved. Thousands got saved. The same mouths that many times are cursing at people on the highway for cutting them off or yelling at the cashier at McDonald's because they didn't have chicken nuggets, the same mouths a lot of times will go home and they'll kiss their spouses, they'll kiss their children, they'll kiss their babies, and they'll tell them they love them. That's what the Bible is talking about. That shouldn't be. That ought not be. That ought not be. Acts chapter 9 talks about the things that came out of the mouth of Apostle Paul when he was named Saul before he was an apostle, before he was a Christian. And Paul persecuted the Jews. Acts 9, 1 says, And Saul, yet breathing and threatening, uh, slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of that way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound in Jerusalem. Now, after Jesus personally spoke to Paul from heaven, he, he, he came right down and spoke to him. He didn't come down physically, but he came down his voice and sent his voice down to Paul out of heaven. Paul was converted to Christianity. 
And, uh, and the man that used the same mouth to curse and to send Christians to their death for talking about Jesus Christ said this in Ephesians 6, 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel. Turn over to Acts chapter 7, uh, verse 54. Acts 7, 54. Acts 7, 54. Now Paul prays for boldness so that he can preach Jesus Christ himself, so that he can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know that many of the Jews, and especially the leaders, the Pharisees, the scribes, the doctors of the laws, the lawyers, they all hated Jesus and his followers. They tried many times, many times to bound them up in their words, to get them caught in their words and trip them up. Because, Je because Satan, instead of Jesus, had a hold of their heart. Satan had a hold of their heart. Occasionally, though, it would break through. The words would come through to them, and sometimes they would hear and they would understand the word. And it would either cause them to believe in Jesus Christ and accept that uh, free gift of salvation, or it would <coughs> make them become furious. They would become furious. Now, when Stephen, uh, the martyr, when he was being confronted, ultimately was, was stoned, when, he, when they were talking to him, and they were telling him things, he told them, he said, that they have always resisted the Holy Spirit, and like their fathers, should like their fathers, they had stoned and, uh, and killed the prophets that had come to preach that Jesus Christ was coming. And when he said that, this made them really, really mad. This made them exceptionally mad. In Acts chapter 7, verse 54, it says this. Then they heard, when they heard these things, rather, uh, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. So that word of Jesus got right into their heart. The truth hurts sometimes. But you know what Jesus said about the truth? He said it will set you free. Yes, sir. And if the truth sets you free, you're free indeed. You're free indeed. But of course you have to believe the truth for it to set you free. Uh, set you free, you have to believe it. And some would rather believe a lie. That's hard to understand, but some would rather believe a lie. Go ahead and turn over your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Dale, you can come on up. And uh, the Bible says in Ezekiel 36, 26, that your old deceitful heart can be changed, can be changed into a new heart. It can be, and that same heart that was hard can be broken and contrite, the Bible says. And then the Bible says this, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Now, doctors think that they did the first heart transplant in the 1960s, but God's been giving heart transplants for centuries. For centuries. Yes, the same mouth that spoke was pride, spoke lies, and now it can speak truth and be humble like Jesus Christ said. The same heart that had been hard, cold, unfeeling, and unbelieving can now be soft, warm, compassionate, and full of faith. That same heart can do that. The same heart that's full of worry and anguish, Jesus says to them in, in uh, John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. As you know, we always close here with uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Romans, Road to Salvation. It's a very clear explanation of how to be saved and how we're saved. And of course today we've been talking about the mouth and the heart of unbelievers. The deceit that fills up the heart that overflows and then spews out of the mouth. But coincidentally, those two very members, the unbeliever, that's what it takes to receive salvation. That's what he uses to receive salvation. The very deceitful heart and mouth are the instruments that God uses to bestow upon you eternal life. The very same thing. God's a great God. He's not bound by the, by the things that we are bound by. He's not held back by the things that we are held back. It says this in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right there he was talking about the mouth. He was talking about the heart right there, the mouth and the heart. You've got to believe. That's what it's about. You've got to believe. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The heart and the mouth again. 
says this, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on will, will be saved, can be saved. You can be saved. Doesn't matter what you've done, no matter who you are, doesn't matter how old you are, you can be saved. The Bible says, for all. He come to, he come to save all. And not just a little bit, to the uttermost. To the utmost. All the way, completely. You don't just do a partial job. You know, sometimes we do a job, we just do part of it, we leave part of it undone. Jesus never does that. He saves to the utmost. Completely. And He saves anyone that will come to Him. All that will believe. All that will believe. You uh, Stand up if you're able to. If you're not, you can be remain seated. But uh, we're going to sing a song of invitation. If the Lord has spoken to you, you can come on up and we'll, uh, we'll do what we need to do with you. We'll talk to you about it. We will, uh, we'll uh, uh, explain to you more perfectly how it is you need, you need to be saved, the things we need to be saved. And I also want you to remember that we're going to have a baptism here, so uh, don't leave uh, unless you have to. Don't leave. And we'll move this stuff out of the way and we'll uh, have a baptism. And it's always a good time. Amen. It's always a great time. Absolutely. As we sing. Just as I And that uh, it is only just like it's a like figure of what Jesus Christ did. You're dead to sin, you're buried with him in baptism, and then you're raised in the newness of life. That's all it is, just a representation of what Jesus Christ did. Uh, the way to be saved is just what we read to you there in uh, Romans, that you have to believe when you are. You've got to confess Jesus Christ, Lord. You have to believe that you are a sinner. I don't think anybody has any problem believing that, do they? I certainly don't. You know, I'm, I know I'm a sinner. You've got to believe, though, that uh, He is Lord, the Lord of all things. When you see that uh, Lord in the Bible there, it's talking about Jesus Christ. It's always a capital L. Amen. When it's talking about a man just being the Lord of his house, it's always a lowercase L. Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And the Bible in the Old Testament even says He's the God of gods. He's the master of all things. They call Him master in the Bible. He is great. He's a perfect, wonderful God. He's blessed above all others. And we ought to keep Him that way. We ought to keep His name that way. Close some of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, once again, we want to thank You, Lord, at the close of another little service today. God, we want to thank You for the words that we've heard today. We thank You, Father, for each and every one that You sent out here today, Lord, and we're thankful, thankful for the, the special occasion that You've uh, blessed us all Amen. to be part of today, Lord. Lord. We thank you for these couple of individuals that have stepped out on your promises, Lord, and, and made their public uh, confession here, Lord, and want to be baptized and join this little church today. We're Amen. thankful for them, Lord, and we pray that we as church uh, brothers and sisters can be uh, a help to them. Amen. And Lord, we pray for your guidance on each, on each of them 
and your leadership for them, Lord. And we thank you for them, and we just pray that your love and compassion and, uh, and mercy towards them. Lord, and, uh, you know, old Satan's still uh, going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour down here yeah. on this earth, Lord. And he he'll is. try. He'll try to destroy their testimony if he can, Lord. So I always took comfort in the words, Lord, that you said, he that's within is stronger than he that's without, yeah. Lord. And we thank you for that, knowing that that spirit that's within them now is stronger than that old Satan. So help them to stand against his cunning ways, Lord, and, and help them to be good Christian yeah. men and women and uh, and just be a blessing to those in their family and those that they come in contact with and, and prepare them, Lord, to go forward now and to do what you've called them to do, and that's to witness to others. Help yeah. them to be bold, Lord, and to go and to do the job that you've given them to do, and we'll thank you for that in advance. Amen. Father, now as we close this service, we just pray that you'd bless this baptism in this time and bless each and every one that showed up here today, Lord. Watch over us as we depart, Lord. The highways are getting, it seems like, more dangerous all the time. So keep yeah. us safe while we're out there traveling yeah. to and fro. And Lord, we'll, we'll pray that you just bring us back here, Lord, at your appointed time. Remember all of our shut-ins today, those that wanted to be here and couldn't. Yeah. Just bless them, Lord, and hopefully this um, broadcast will be a benefit to them as well and a blessing yeah. to them as well. In Jesus' name we do humbly ask and pray now. And amen. 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 All right, we're going to move a couple things around. Make yourself comfortable for a few minutes and we'll get, yeah. get on to it then. Yes. Can we move this one over to the side? Yeah, yeah I'm going to put that one so just for a minute go across to the side. I'm going to turn it off right now. <laughs> so, so I'm not shaking it all over? Yeah, no, 